Dear students, today I will be completing on the practicals of environmental engineering lab. So last class I have done on all the physical parameters. Today I will be continuing with chemical parameters. Okay. So please see. First, before starting, let me give you the fundamentals of titration first. So irrespective of the things titration is one of the technique to estimate many of the chemical parameters like the BOD, COD, then your hardness, chloride and then any other chemical parameters okay say so alkalinity so what is titration but being an environmental engineering being in civil engineering always students have the apprehension the moment they see the word titrations chemistry so let me tell you what is titration first the basic fundamental based on this all the chemical parameters can be evaluated so first this is something you have to check down <clears throat> say for example this is the this is your burette okay now this you must have seen in the lab this is a burette and then this is a sample this is a sample what you do is this sample remember this sample you want to estimate what you want to estimate you may estimate for alkalinity i have not told you alkalinity don't worry you may want to estimate alkalinity hardness maybe then BOD, COD, maybe chloride, anything or in the hardness also whether you want to estimate calcium or not. So all these things in alkalinity we have three types carbonate, bicarbonate and hydroxides all these things we are going to estimate by using a titration technique. So this is a sample you want to estimate for your period. So the first thing what you will do is you will bring a sample over here. Okay. This is a sample. This is a sample. I am teaching you the basic fundamental first. Okay. In buret, what it contains is called titrate. Okay. So this will be filled completely with titrate. Then you may ask, sir, what is titrate that I am going to come? So first thing, this sample, first example, let's do with, let's, I'll give you an example. We are going to find hardness. Okay. So in order to estimate the hardness in the sample, we know the titrant use is E D T A. Okay. There are three things required. One is number one is what is the titrant required? Okay. What is the sample? What is the thing you want to require? And number three is what is the end point? End point, we call it indicator. Okay. So why end point? To check the reactions are complete. This is class 19, 11, 12 chemistry. Okay. So the first thing how to estimate is you will keep on doing the titrations. This is titrant. This is a solid sample. You will keep on doing titration. Finally, you will get an endpoint by using the indicator. Correct? So, this titrant, number one, titrant, we are going to say this is volume one. And this titration volume is the amount of the volume what is this amount this is the volume required to complete the titration correct till end point okay just a second please to complete the end point Thank you. 
las lo ve. Some disturbance was there from the other side, that's why. So now the video is still keep on going. Fine. Huh. So required to complete the titration to the end point. And what is the strength of the titrant you used? Number two is the strength. The strength is, and I told you, that is the normality or the equivalent. Normality or the equivalent you are using it. So it is up to you to maintain what strength you want to use. Number two is in a sample, you know your volume. This volume is V2. This is V1 and strength 1 is this is N1. Okay. This volume 2 is looking sometimes, many of the times, we take it as 100 ml or 50 ml. This is the V2. Volume 2. Okay. So, as per the Nernst equation, what you say is, always remember, N1 V1 is equal to N2 V2. Therefore, V2 is equal to N1 V1 divided by N2. So, this is the equation we are going to use for estimation of all the chemical parameters. Is it okay clear? Now, let me begin. This is the basic fundamental of titrations. By using the titrations in a given sample, if chloride is there, if calcium is there, if BOD is there, if COD is there, you can estimate any parameters by using titration technique. And in the buret, we are going to use the titrant. So based on the titrant, you can estimate. For example, for the hardness, we use EDTA. Okay. And endpoint indicator, I think we used Muroxide. So that one I'll check once more again. And now, how to estimate is, the titration is done till the end point. Okay. So, for this titrant, how much volume is consumed to finish the titration? That is the volume 1. Required to complete the titration till the end point. And what is the strength you use? This is optionable. You can use many high strength. You can use low strength. For example, if you want to estimate a very high strength, you can use a high strength over here. Okay. And this is sample number is volume number 2, 100 ml or 50 ml, whatever you take. So as per the condition, what we want to estimate hardness is nothing. The strength of the sample when estimated by EDT. So the equation is N1 V1 is equal to N2 V2. Therefore, oh, I made a mistake over here. Not V2. It is also correct. N2, what we want to find, it is V2. Okay. If you want to find hardness, N2, you have to do titration with the EDTA. If you want to find alkalinity, you have to use sulfuric acid. If you want to find BOD, you have to use, I think, uh, sodium thiosulfate. If you want to use chloride, then you have to do titration with silver nitrate. So, based on different, different titrant, you can estimate the chemical present over here. The basic fundamental is N2 is equal to N1 B1 by V2. N1 is the strength of the titrant. V1 is the titrant you consume. V2 is the volume of the sample that you have done. So strength you can find. Is it okay? Now, say, let me give you one example. This is the basic fundamental. If whatever you get over here, you will get in terms of equivalent. Okay, so if you want to find, say for example, hardness. Hardness we know, we convert in terms of, not in terms of, as calcium carbonate. Therefore, this what you get N2 is equal to, N2 is equal to, what you get over here, N2 into the one equivalent is 50 grams per liter as calcium carbonate. So whatever you will get equivalent, you multiply by their equivalent weight, that you will get the skills finished.
Okay. So this is the basic fundamental of this one. Say, I'll give you just another example. If you want to find, say, chloride. Okay. Chloride. What I'll do is, for the chloride, the titrant I want to use for chloride. So the titrant used will be, here will be silver nitrate. My nervous are screaming and shouting, just give me time. So the silver nitrate will be used and then uh, end point. Then what you get over here is you want to find how much chloride is over here. Say let us this one. Say if you are using is 0 0.01 normality. Say for example, this is the one you have used. So the calculation will be. So the calculation strength will be N2 is equal to what is N1? That is 0 0.01 is strength. How much V1 is consumed? Let's say the V1 consumed is, is around say 20 ml. Okay. For chloride. Let's say 20 ml of the sample is consumed for chloride. So into 20 ml divided by 2 total is 100 ml. This is the strength equivalent. Now you want to convert into chloride the equivalent weight of chloride is how much? It is 35. So you multiply by 35. 0.5 okay so 35.5 is a grams this is equivalent so how much you get Point zero one into 20 into 35.5 divided by 100 so that is 0 0.071. This is 0 0.071 grams per liter, or this is 71 milligrams per liter of chloride. Is it okay? Multiply by the equivalent weight of the chemicals you want to find. If chloride, it's chloride. Is it fine? Now, this is the basic fundamental of titration. With the help of titration, we can estimate many, many parameters. So to begin with, let me start with first with alkalinity. Okay, let me start with pH and alkalinity. Fine, in case if you want to have a look, you can pause the video and you can have a look. Okay, thank you. Red color seems the black color and the red color seems gone very easily. Green finds a bit difficult. First one is the pH. First chemical parameter number one is pH. Everyone knows pH is nothing. It is the formula is negative logarithm of hydrogen concentration. Now you look over here. I'm using this double bracket. Okay. This has got a lot of significance. This is called molar concentration. This is not just I put up the bracket. It has got a meaning, this molar concentration, okay? Now, what happened is this hydrogen in the water is in terms of 10 to the power minus 2, 10 to the power minus 3, minus 4, minus 7. If you ask to a lemon, how much hardness is there? How much calcium is there? How much arsenic is there? You can say this much milligram per liter. In terms of hydrogen ions, it is in 10 to the power minus 0 0.000. It's very very small so to make the things very easy what we do is we know that 
water is hydrogen concentration this is simple basic fundamental is 10 to the power minus 40 okay so the product of the molar concentration of hydrogen and OH is 10 to the power minus 40 so hydrogen will concentration will be in terms of 10 to the power minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 to make the things easy say if hydrogen concentration is called the 10 to the power minus 4 then I cannot say the hydrogen concentration is 10 to the power minus 4 layman people cannot understand so what we do is to make the things very easy what we do is first of all we take the logarithm of this if you take log of h log of h then you will get this minus 4 am I correct to make to remove this minus 4 now you see over here if you put minus I make it this minus so this equation is nothing this is a pH is equal to 4 so pH is equal to 4 means nothing the hydrogen concentration is 10 to the power minus 4 just for easy calculation okay and P stands for potential of hydrogen okay now parallelly let me say what is POH this is also potential of hydroxide this is negative log of OH minus is it clear fine so I don't have to go in depth now let me see how pH is important pH 10 7 this is neutral this side is alkaline this side is basic sorry 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 acidic okay I don't want to go much calculation because this is a practical not theory. It will come in environmental engineering part one. Only this much, and pH is estimated by using pH meter. And what you have to know is, if the solution is very acidic, then there's a lot of hydrogen concentration is there. It used to destroy the containers, intrusions. Okay, so these things you can see by yourself. Next parameter in the lab, what you can do is you can collect some samples and you can estimate the pH. One is pH meter, and in olden days, we use not very accurate pH paper also. You take a piece of pH paper, dip it, based on the color, you can tell what is the, uh, what is the pH of the sample, just in approximate value. Okay, now let me go for alkaline, next one. I'm not teaching anything based on theory, I'm teaching on practical purpose. Okay. Now for the alkalinity, let me give the basic fundamentals. Alkalinity. Definition of alkalinity is the acid neutralizing capacity of solid of water okay that means when the water is there the water may be trying to change into acid due to certain compounds so the water has some power to control it, not to change into acidic pH. That strength is called alkalinity. And what are the constituent ingredients that is present in the water that enables the water to have a strength to neutralize the acid? The three ions. Okay. The responsible ions are OH, the main thing, the carbonates, and the bicarbonates. Okay, these are the three responsible ions. So basically, if you say alkalinity means it symbolizes especially these three ions. Now, to begin with, let me give some examples. When water, from where the alkalinity comes to the water, 
and why it is important for environmental engineering students to read. See, when water what happens is mixed with carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Okay, water is simply there. Now I'll give you one example. You take a bottle of water, make it open, you carry it from here to your lab, maybe around two kilometers. Do you think pH will be changed? You can say pH will be changed only hydrogen concentration comes into the plane. But during the time I have not contaminated anything. But the thing is, during the process of carrying it, the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere may be very, very little or maybe insignificant, but theoretically some amount may get absorbed and the reaction, reversible reaction gives H2CO3, carbon acid. Okay. So, and this acid itself is a very, 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 very weak acid. Weak acid means it disassociate not completely, partially. So, this H2CO3, again, it breaks down and it releases the hydrogen ions plus HCO3. This is equation number two. Okay. Then this is also a very weak acid. It breaks down into again hydrogen plus plus CO3 2 minus. Is that okay? Fine. Again, further this carbonate it reacts with water also and it gives out H CO3 minus plus OH ions. This is equation number four. So from this equation, these are the natural automatical equation that happens inside the water based on the left hand side, right hand side balance. From this equation, what we can see over here is this is one ions, this is another ions, and this is another ion. Is that okay? So these three ions hydroxide, carbonate and bicarbonate, they come into the picture with some ions based on the equilibrium of the left and the right hand side whenever the water has got some carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and this creates the alkalinity and why it is important to study the alkalinity because more is the alkalinity will be in the basic form therefore the chemical reaction or whatever we require in the neutral pH or in acidic may be affected Okay, so this is one of the parameters to study. So this is our alkalinity, how it comes in the picture. Now let's study directly. I'm not going to go much basic fundamentals. I'm going to go directly as a practical because this is practical class. So let us see how we estimate these three ions. These three ions are nothing. This is what we are going to call it as alkalinity. And mind you, we estimated alkalinity by titration and the combination of these three. So the unit cannot be in terms of bicarbonates or carbonate or hydroxide, but the unit is combined as calcium carbonate, as I explained in the last class. Is that clear? Let me check the video is still on or not. Fine, it's still going on. So now let me go with how to estimate the alkalinity in the lab. Okay, so during the titration, as we have the burets, I will draw a graph over here. So in the buret here, we put sulfuric acid. It is going to be neutralized, the acid, so we put acid, the titrant. So the titrant is 
sulfuric acid so drop by drop we are putting sulfuric acid and this is the ph whether how much it is drop we are going to see is it okay say or i'll draw another picture over here this is a oh i'm not very good in drawing this is a burette you are going to put the sulfuric acid over here this is a sample okay this is a sample you want to estimate alkalinity over here what happened is the moment you put drop by drops of this sulfuric acid the ph will keep on decreasing am i correct the ph will keep on decreasing because the more and the more you add acids it's going to become acidic so this titration is going on right now this sulfuric acid drop by drop we are putting it and we are doing estimation now initially the ph was somewhere around here i don't know maybe you say 11 or 12 ph so the moment you add more and more acid the graph will come down am i correct because the more the more you add acids over here drop by drop you add acid ph will come down is that clear ph is coming down so suddenly there is a point of contraflexure coming like this means this is con concave then it converts to convex okay in the language of string of materials we call it points of contraflexure so this ph it happens to be 8.3 or sometimes it happens to be 8.4 automatically fine number one in the first titration uh sorry in the first titration in the indicator we put one as phenolphthalein so first we put here phenolphthalein okay the moment we put phenolphthalein we do the titration and then we finish over here so this point what happened is this point phenolphthalein is over phenolphthalein is over okay and then number two what we put is we put methyl orange this is the second indicator we put and then we further continue the titration and then the graph the graph still keeps on coming down again then again it goes like this so this point what happened is here methyl orange alkalinity is over is complete okay now you see over here and this pH methyl orange happens to be around 4.5 okay so sometimes in your exams people may ask air pH 4.5 or 4.4 every book have different values but a little bit uh, difference over there that means methyl orange completes in pH 4.5 and phenolphthalein completes around pH 8.3 even though your result may not be 8.3 exactly it may be 8.2 8.4 due to the other impurities and due to the error of the pH meter some slight changes may be there however theoretically phenolphthalein is completed by 8.3 methyl orange is completed by 4.5 so that way we also classify alkalinity in two ways one is based on the indicator alkalinity may be defined as phenolphthalein alkalinity and methyl orange alkalinity and based on the ingredients it can be classified in three ways one is hydroxide carbonate and bicarbonates okay so in this phenolphthalein alkalinity what are the responsible ingredients here it is OH in the phenolphthalein what the titrate is this OH plus half of carbonate ions okay so I told you this part alkalinity is neutralizing the acids that capacity is called the alkalinity and that is phenolphthalein alkalinity and till pH 8.3 the responsible ions that is fighting against the neutralizing of acid are the hydroxyl ions and whatever carbonate is present 
half of the carbonate is consumed in 8.3 okay and this part is whatever the half of carbonate left will be used over here plus the bicarbonates so this two ions and this two ions over here com completes the phenolphthalein and methylorins alkylate is it clear fine now let's say when you do the titration i'm going to now complete it rub it you please have a look let's say you do the titration you got v1 n1 v2 n2 that calculation let me show you and let me teach you how to estimate this carbonates hydroxide and this bicarbonates so now i'll come into that after doing the titration how to estimate is it okay let's have a look the chart should be clear and much thorough with the students okay now i think in parallel to this let me teach you from the experimental point of view let's say number one your v1 the titrant v1 v1 for say let's say phenolphthalein is let's say 18 ml is consumed and the strength n1 for phenolphthalein is 0 0.02 this is sulfuric acid you can use whatever you want i'm just giving one example let's say 18 ml of the 18 ml of acid is consumed for phenolphthalein alkalinity and the strain use is 0 0.02 and the volume two that is a sample what you have used let's say it is 100 ml then what is phenolphthalein alkalinity i told you n1 v1 is equal to n2 v2 therefore n2 is equal to n1 v1 by v2 so the top is 18 into 0 0.02 18 into 0 0.02 divided by v2 what is v2 100 okay this is equivalent this is equivalent so 100 means this will be 2 to 18 ja, 36 this is 36 equivalent there is no unit yet equivalent and we are not very sure out of the 36 how much is hydroxide how much is carbonates we are not very sure okay let it be number next is for methyl orange similarly let's say for the methyl orange let's say v1 methyl orange say let's say 5 ml is consumed and n will be same the titration is same it is going to be same titrate right therefore therefore here for here n2 is equal to that i can means 5 into 0 0.02 divided by 100 okay is it going to be 100 is it going to be 100 if the experiment is fresh then you can consider as 100 but mind you over here this 18 ml this 18 ml is already included so the sample is not 100 ml but rather it is 118 ml okay so this should be 100 plus 18 because the sample already was started with phenolphthalein but if it's very insignificant you can take it 100 ml so there is 5 into 0 0.02 0 no this is also not correct let me see the calculations i made a mistake 18 into 0 0.02 divided by 
100. This is not, this is 0 0.0036. So I can say this is as 3.6 milli equivalent. Okay. And this one is 5 into 0 0.02 is called to divided by. This is 0 0.8 milli equivalent. Okay. Is it clear? So this is the phenolphthalein alkalinity and this is the methyl oils alkalinity. Therefore, total alkalinity is equal to 3.6 plus 0 0.8 is equal to 4.4 milli equivalent. Look here, it's equal to 4.4 into 50 milligram per liter as calcium carbonate. So 15 to 4.4 means 5 into 44, 5 for the 20, 5 for the 220 milligram per liter as calcium carbonate. So this is the final answer. The total alkalinity is 220 milligram per liter as calcium carbonate. So this is the total alkalinity. Is it okay? Is it fine? I think it's very clear now. Now, from here, how are we supposed to find the hydroxide, the carbonates, and the bicarbonates? That's going to come into the picture. You look this chart very properly. Okay. Let me check the video. Is still on? Yeah, still on. See here, now from this what we've learned is, as I told you over here, in phenolphthalein alkalinity, what is present is OH plus half of carbonates. Okay, methyl orange is called to bicarbonate plus half of carbonates. Okay. Now over here, another point is what we have to remember is this is the first equation. This is the second equation. And another one is, see, OH and this bicarbonates. Okay. One is acid, one is base. So another assumption is OH and bicarbonate doesn't exist together okay because one is acid and one is base correct but this is not a correct statement it is as per the chemical equilibrium the thing is if bicarbonate are very much OH will be there but maybe very 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 insignificant if this is very high this will be present but this is very very insignificant but in other way we can assume that these two doesn't exist together for easy calculation okay now number one you see over here and p plus m is equal to total alkalinity okay so based on this let me do a chart 
Okay. Number one is this is a condition. Condition number one is, and this is the OH. This is the bicarbonates, and this is the carbonates. Where will you see? The first condition is, let's say, phenolphthalein is equal to zero. There is no phenolphthalein alkalinity in the water. That means if the pH of the water itself is less than 8.3, because the phenolphthalein alkalinity completes by 8.3. So if the pH is below 8.3, that means phenolphthalein alkalinity is already over, right? So in that condition, we can assume that phenolphthalein is equal to zero. See over here, if phenolphthalein alkalinity is zero, means this is zero, what will happen? OH, there is no OH, so OH is zero, correct? And this carbonate will also be zero. If half of the carbonate that is supposed to be on the phenolphthalein side is not there, means at the lower side, this also will not be there. That means whenever carbonate CO3 to minus is there, Automatically, it will go half on the upper side, phenolphthalein side, and half will be the lower side. In the half is not exist, means the remaining half will not be exist, right? So, this carbon will also be zero. Therefore, whatever total alkalinity you get,